big time fight, the one that I'm most looking forward to on this card, we have Wreck-It Ralph fighting the Hulk. We have Alexander Romanov fighting Juan Espino. And while the nicknames aren't what I just said, they're actually King Kong and El Guapo. I love this fight. For Romanov, this guy has the weirdest mix of backgrounds and techniques. So, let's go over it. He's out of Moldova. You don't see a lot of Moldovan fighters. Iwan Kutselaba is one that rings a bell. But if you watch him fight... The guy's just a meathead. He runs after people, he picks them up, belly-to-belly -belly suplex, throws them, That's gets awesome. on top. And if you watch his last fight against Marcos Rogerio de Lima, well, he puts his forearm <laughs> into his neck and pushes down on it and puts him to sleep. High level. It's disgusting. <laughs> and if you look at his opposite, Juan Espino, this guy's just a really, really interesting character. He's out of the Canary Islands, over in Spain. He trains an American top team with Junior Dos Santos and Alistair, uh, Alistair Overeem. Andre Orlovsky is also on this card. And for Juan Espino, very fleet of foot for a guy that's 40 years old. And for uh, Arlovsky and for Espino, both heavyweights over 40. Not something you have every day. But for Espino, not as many miles on the ticker. He's really able to kind of, you know, judge his gas tank well. And if you went and watched his last fight against Jeff Hughes, totally out-wrestled him. Oh, and yeah. for Juan Espino, he kind of moves around. He gets into position. Doesn't really throw a lot of a jab. He just kind of closes distance with an overhand. It's a little bit, a little bit. Like Alexei Olenek, if Olenek had way less fights. But he will kind of move around. He'll figure out his footing. He gets the takedown. And when he gets you down, it's not a question of if. It's a question of when he's going to submit you. For his submission, Scarfold, it was just a bully choke. He pulled on Jeff Hughes' head and neck and gets the tap. So for Romanov, meathead, absolute meathead. For Juan Espino, a little bit more finesse in his game. For Romanov, his actual backgrounds are wrestling... Muay Thai, and not Sambo, but you'd think it, Sumo. He has Sumo as his background. This guy's an absolute insane ball of fun. I love the fight because if you know anything about Fight Night Picks, I've been saying Juan, where he at for years, and now we actually get Juan Espino. I could not be more excited for this fight. So we both have fighters who aren't ranked in a lot of divisions, really, who we both just kind of keep an eye out for. You know, it's not like I'm a fan of a lot of fighters. I just like a lot of them. So Craig, I won't say Dark Horse, but just this sort of like guy at heavyweight who he enjoys watching is Juan Espino. Mine's Alexander Romanov. And that's why I'm so excited for this fight because it does feel like there's somewhat of a personalized touch to it, if you will. But I do think he broke this fight down really well. Don't really have two good strikers here. And honestly, they're both sort of awkward on the feet. When I think of Alexander Romanov, a lot of his striking is to get to the clinch, but not even. He will just kind of put his hands out and rush forward. Now, against guys, and I'm going to bring up a name who, yes, his stock might not all be all that high right now but i think this will make sense Jerzyna Rosenstrike is a very bad fight for Alexander Romanov. Because if you're a guy who's moving forward, you're not sound defensively, he can keep things very tight and on the inside and hurt you for those defensive lapses. Now, Juan Espino's striking isn't great either, so I really doubt he can capitalize on that. But it is a hole in Romanov's game that just to watch out for when he does start fighting ranked guys. But that's the thing. I think Romanov is a fighter who belongs in the rankings. Not yet. He does have to prove himself to a certain point. But he will be around for a long time. When I look at other guys in the heavyweight division, the Marcin Tabor of the world the Blagoy Ivanovs of the world they might not be all that exciting but stylistically they fit in with guys like Alexander Romanov and honestly they fit in with Juan Espino too and that's why this fight's so entertaining if Espino is able to take Romanov to the ground and get on top of him it's over I'm comfortable saying that right now Romanov's gonna exert a crap ton of energy trying to get back up to his feet and Juan Espino you said he's slightly more finesse oriented he's much more finesse oriented than Alexander Romanov and he will be able to really float from guard half guard male he's the much more I won't say positionally aware, I'll say positionally fluid fighter in Juan Espino, where even if the bottom fighter's moving around a lot, he's similar to, and I can't believe I'm saying this, Charles Oliveira, where he can kind of float on top of a fighter. A much heavier float, if you will, a very large man, but still, it is a very efficient way of grappling from Espino, and it's the type of grappling that I'm not going to get worried if Espino's on top of Ronoff round after round. I'm not going to worry about his cardio, because he is an efficient grappler. He isn't just muscling his way in and out of positions, although he can, like you had brought up with the scarf show whereas alexander romanov think of every wwe fighter ever who just throws people around that's basically what alexander romanov does it would be like if sakuraba didn't have catch wrestling as a background it was just the wrestler who went into mma but for romanov when he gets on top of fighters it's not that oh i'm gonna pass from guard into half guard and then maybe i'll sink in a choke He's going to get into full mount and hit you with double hammer fist from on top. Is it the best way to waste your energy? Probably not. Is it entertaining to watch? Definitely yes. 
But for me, I do think this fight comes down to the wrestling. And unfortunately for Juan Espino, he doesn't really have the background that's going to be able to hold up against the wrestling of Alexander Romanov. They're both going to want the fight in a very similar spot. And they're both going to be looking to close the distance. But my issue comes to once that distance is closed and these guys are really, well, belly to belly, Alexander Romanov has a ton of takedowns that he can go to in his back pocket. And they don't always involve the clinch. He can do single legs. He can do double legs. We see a lot of these high amplitude or takedowns from Romanov, but he can do much more... I'll say nuanced takedowns, if you will, single legs, double legs. And for Espino, if he can get in top uh, position, I like his chances. But for me, I just don't know when he's going to get the opportunity to really get the fight in that position. Can Romanov not tire himself out? That's the question. Like so that. if you really wanted a good pick, you wanted a sound one, if it's available as the week goes on, probably like an under two rounds, I would go with that, or under 2.5, I think that'd be a fair one. But I look at this fight, Matt, and for Romanov, you're coming in here. He had a bit of a layoff. He had some fights booked. He had a little bit of the USADA issues. He's got some big traps. He's got He's some really big, big traps. And for Juan Espino, coming out of American Top Team, you look at the picks over in the Instagrams. Again, usual suspects. Arlovsky, JDS, Nikita Krylov, Alexei Olenek, Yoel Romero. Good guys. It's very team. interesting to see who he does have in, you know, in the gym and, and who he's getting ready with. I love the fight again. We can't pump this up enough. So if we have a look at the odds, they open at par. Romanov's now a minus 144 favorite for Juan Espino. Again, open at par. He's now a plus 118 underdog. And if we look at the topology votes, they're not even close. 1,015. You have 79% Romanov, 58% by knockout, 16% by submission. For the slight percentage that have Espino, 50% by submission. To me, yeah, either Romanov absolutely dominates him or... He dominates him for two and a half minutes and gets tired and Espino submits him. That's pretty much it for me. For Romanov with the stand-up, you know, you kind of joke about it. it Rogerio de Lima cracked him. Multiple like, times. Cracked him on his way in and he rushes with his hands down. Somebody's going to catch him. He fights like a Sergei Pavlovich. Pavlovich is going to hit him. He fights Chris Dacus for heaven's sake. Maybe he finishes him. But I look at Romanov. The weird thing that he does in his fights outside of the UFC... It's weird to put Pavlovich and the dog. Keeps, keeps his hands really low. He's a southpaw. Doesn't really throw a lot of punches, but he throws a lot of front kicks. And he really closes distance that way. When we've seen him against, like, Roki Martinez, and then in the last one where he did take on DeLima, it was booked once, and then he got Martinez, and then he got DeLima. I mean, he just absolutely rushed him. And he did get cracked. I don't know if Espino can, because for Espino, again, very fleet of foot, good motion, good footwork, good fundamentals... But he pretty much only has an overhand right. Did it work for Jargis? Okay. Sure it did. Old guy? Sure. But I just don't see it in this fight. I like Romanov. I agree. I, I don't think Romanov is going to do to Leonardo DiCaprio what the Bear and the Revenant did. But I do see this fight being slightly similar to that. I do see Romanov's top pressure just being a lot for Juan Espino to handle. And my issue is that Juan Espino actually off his back is going to be looking for submissions. And that's my issue. If he was more urgent to get back up to his feet, then I might like Espino a little bit more. But the fact that he is kind of comfortable off his back, he's going to be eating damage there against a guy like Romanov. So if Romanov is able to secure those takedowns, especially early on in this fight, I do like Romanov quite a bit. On my personal personal card i'm gonna go under two and a half when the line comes up but i'm gonna pick romanov in this fight yikes yeah yikes both of us going with romanov to get the win really love the fight i cannot wait make sure you join in with fight night picks question mark kicks and hell maybe you'll find me live on instagram when this one's going on i absolutely love it we both have like i said romanov to get the win over spino great card main event Bobby Knuckles taking on Kelvin Gaslam. Let's keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, as we always say. Let's, let's get, get into it. it.